Hello everyone. In the last lectures, we have seen what was the basics of uh, pyro sequencing. We had seen what the biochemistry takes place, what are the reactions takes place, and what are the basic general flow of that particular method. Now, in this lecture, we I am going to talk about the exact 454 technology that has been developed by Roche. Okay. So, it is the company which has developed this particular method, pyro sequencing, and let us see that uh, how it takes place. Mm, so, in the earlier lecture itself, I have already talked about that pyro sequencing is an amalgamation of very important your emulsion PCR and your luciferase uh, light emitting uh, whatever reaction is there. So, combining these two things together, this particular method has been developed. So, we have to see in particularly how this emulsion PCR takes place. So for this thing, the first step is the preparation of the DNA. So we all know that particularly this particular method pyro sequencing is uh, important like uh, we are going to sequence small small fragments in this particular case. So a uh, uh, DNA can be first sheared into small fragments of around 300 to 800 base pairs okay so now how shearing can be done so there are different types of methods like you can have this is a, a nebulizer so by nebulization you can uh, fragment this dna into small fragments okay so what is nebulizer it is nothing but you have a, a small pipe through which your nitrogen gas can be uh, pushed in with a lot of pressure and the DNA solution is also then pushed with that particular pressure of the gas. So uh, and then it is allowed to come out from small orifices. So what happens is because of that pressure then uh, the DNA gets fragmented, mechanical fragmentation it is called. Or else you can use a sonicator because of a high intensity sound waves uh, the sonication takes place or it will shear, it will fragment the DNA or mechanical shearing can be done where you have small needles through which these uh, uh, DNA is being passed through so that small fragments are going to be produced. So now once you have got the fragments what can happen is they can have some ends which are loose like that would be some extended ends or or so that has to be polished so those unpaired bases the ends has to become blunt okay so those unpaired uh, bases that could be removed and the DNA strand ends are made blunt so you have different enzymes which are used for this particular method. Now once this blunt ends are being uh, produced now they are going to be ligated with two adapters that is a and b adapters using your dna ligase so what is the role of the adapters that we will see in the next slide uh, so once this adapters have been added the strands are going to be denatured using your uh, sodium hypoxide uh, hydroxide sorry to release the single stranded dna template libraries so let us see what is the role of this adapters. So you can see here like uh, see uh, uh, this particular diagram. So if this is the fragment that has been produced by your mechanical uh, whatever your mechanical method is there. So once the fragment is produced now these are the loose ends right. You have some extra unpaired bases that are present over here. So those bases can be removed so that you have proper blunt ends that will be produced. <coughs> And to this, your these kind of your uh, adapters could be adjusted. Okay, so in this diagram, you can see your single stranded DNA. Once you have uh, uh, denatured it with your NOH, such kind of single stranded DNA would be produced, which will be having on one end you would be having the binding of A adapter, and on the other end would be your B adapter. So these adapters, both A and B adapters are used as priming sites for both amplification as well as for sequencing. Okay, so uh, because we don't know what is the sequence of this particular uh, DNA. So these adapters will help us in choosing the primers because these adapter sequences are already known to us and when they are being attached, so primers can attach to this particular ends and then start the amplification of this particular uh, DNA fragments which are there. Now the B adapter is usually having this 5' biotin tag 
which is used for mobilization if you remember that uh, biotin tags are added to these uh, your one of the primers we had already discussed earlier so these primers uh, so these adapters will have this particular tag okay so once this biotin tag is there it is easier to bind these uh, dna fragments on to your magnetic beads because these magnetic beads are coated with your streptavidin so beads are magnetized and then attract the biotin because of the presence of uh, your streptavidin in the b adapter uh, because of presence of your biotin in the b adapter this can bind okay so that is the role of your uh, adapters are there so next step that is uh, when the cloning is starting so let us see so this is you are using your uh, water in oil emulsion okay so everyone knows that oil and water does not mix together but what is an emulsion when your oil droplets you drop it in water and then mix it rigorously you will form an emulsion so such kind of your mixture is being produced in this particular method also so each single stranded dna in the library is then hybridized onto a, a primer coated bead so what happens is here you create an environment so these beads whatever we have seen in the step one now these beads are added onto such kind of a a uh, droplet such kind of an environment where your oil and water both are present okay and then the dilution is such that every emulsion bead will have only so uh, like your these beads are there and you will be adding your single stranded uh, dnas okay so the single stranded dnas would be less and the beads would be more so when you have a competition what will happen one bead will have only one single strand so you can see over here you have one bead to that only a one single template is going to be added so that is how the environment or that is how the dilution has to be maintained and then each bead each bead with one this particular template would be then captured in one this particular uh, you can say an emulsion reactor so you can say a one droplet so this droplet becomes the micro reactor for that particular bead and this droplet because when you are making this emulsion all the uh, necessities all the ingredients requirements that are there for a pcr reaction everything would be added in this particular emulsion so when a droplet is being formed it acts as a micro reactor for this particular bead so pcr will take place in each of this bead individually but parallelly that means at the same time it would be taking place so this entire activity is called as your emulsion pcr so one adapter contains the biotin which will help in binding to the streptavidin coating beaded and the ratio of this bead to your dna is controlled so that only a single dna a single dna gets added to your bead okay oil is added to the beads and an emulsion is created and pcr is being performed with each aqueous droplet forming its own micro reactor as i have already explained it to you and each bead then coated up so you can see in this particular uh pic. so when your uh, the amplification starts so here you will see that each bead then once uh, start forming uh, once will get coated with millions of the identical copies of this particular original dna which have been uh, bound to the bead so it will remain on that bead itself so you, here you can see that how your droplets so in a uh, ependrop only you can see that your oil droplets and your so this particular mixture would be then rigorously shaken so that these droplets will form and on these inside this droplet you can find these beads with one template and once uh, the cloning takes place the amplification takes place the same of uh, strands or templates will get just uh, added to the probes which are being present so these are nothing but your primers which are being uh, present on the streptavidin coated uh, beads okay so next step is your 
uh, sequencing so we saw the use of your b adapter because how it will be getting so now you have the a adapter so utilizing this a adapter again a primer is going to be added to this single uh, standard dna which is there so the uh, bead are now loaded into individual wells okay created from finely packed and cut fiber optics so whatever the beads that we have got from your step two okay so that is forming a kind of a library so one bead having many copies of the same fragment it has now become a library for us so from those libraries now we'll be taking the beads and now the uh, sequencing will start so the beads are now loaded into individual wells so you can see here these are uh, wells so you have actually your this kind of a plate is there you can see this is a pico tighter plate okay so if you see very closely you can see such kind of your wells in it and the wells are designed such that only one particular bead will go and occupy this particular bead so once these beads have gone and occupied these wells then there are some other beads here you can see that the beads which are loaded with enzymes and there are some packing beads also that will get added okay <coughs> So the enzymes, all the enzymes, you have sulfurylase, you have luciferase, you have polymerase, everything would be added in this, okay, and all your apirase. So the entire well is a flow channel, it's kind of a flow channel. So the uh, nucleotides and your apirase will be timely scheduled to pass on through this entire channel, however we want it. So in the software, it can be suggested that for how much time we want it to be passed. So after the emulsion PCR has been performed, the oil is going to be removed and the beads are put into this uh, picotiter plate. Each well, as I've already told you, is just enough to hold a single bead. And the pyro sequencing enzymes are then added to your these kind of your single beads, which are then added to these wells. And the plate are then repeatedly washed with each of the four DNTPs plus other necessary reagents in a repetitive cycle that would be adjusted by your software as i said and the plate is then coupled to a fiber optic chip a ccd camera records all the light that has been flashing uh, from each of the well whenever a particular dntp is added so that is how a picogram would be or a pyrogram would be recorded so you can see here dna first fragmented and then that will be going to your these kind of your oil and immersion uh, formation that is formed in a particular ependroff so that the beads get uh, uh, captured onto your bead onto your these droplets which forms as a micro reactors which will have and each bead will have one particular fragment so the amplification will first take place and there would be many copies so you will have thousands or millions of copies on uh, one particular bead and now these beads would be put up on these kind of your uh, wells so in your picotiter well and then your enzymes would be added so that the reaction is going to take place so reaction everyone knows that the nucleotide bases uh, bases are added in a timely fashion beginning from atgc 10 seconds each every nucleotide would be added for 10 seconds and then once they have uh, the reaction has taken place there would be an apirase wash so that all the unused dntps are then would be washed off and then it would be followed by the next nucleotide as a byproduct of this incorporation of dna you know that ppi is going to be released that ppi along with your uh, that ppi along with aps that will be utilized by your sulfurylase to create your atp and this each atp produced by your sulfurylase would be used by luciferase luciferase will hydrolyze this atp and will produce oxyluciferin from luciferin and your light is going to be generated this light is going to be recorded by your ccd cameras a wash of apirase is released after each nucleotide as i've told you so that it can wash off all the in uh, unincorporated nucleotides so this is the entire flow of this particular method you can see here first an amplicon pool is generated so that is going to be captured on the beads then added into your reagents and emulsion oil is formed micro reactors will be forming 
and a lot of copies would be formed loaded onto your picotiter wells enzymes are loaded and then once that wells would be loaded onto this machine and the reaction will be taking place and your pyrogram would be formed thank you